Good Morning Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution. We ain't calling it this. We got a draft of the logo. It looks kind of nice, but it had a it had a fist in the middle of it. So I was like, you know, it looks a little bit too masculine. Let's see if we can find something that's more, you know, representative of of the agenda um, and uh, people in general. So we'll see what uh, what happens. Uh, Hello, Rosanna. Morning. Good morning to you um, and Anita. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Revolution. California. Good morning, Ohio. Revolution. What? Is the sun shining in Ohio? Uh, it's a little cloudy today, but it's going to be a, a nice day, I think. Cold. After, after democracy got its butt whooped in Ohio uh, last, last week. I mean, come on, man. You told me that y'all were going to win it. And, and well, we're getting ready to to uh, defeat Rob Portman in 22 now, so. Well, okay. I'm not going to hold my breath, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, God, you look like a lumberjack. You got oh, the, well, the, uh, the Irish coming out in you, Irish lumberjack. No, it's, green, it's getting cold glass. in upstate New York, and this is, you know, this is the uh, uniform. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is how we dress when it gets cold. Okay, you even or, got a little lime green scarf. You know, you match it. It's, it's a mask. It's a mask. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, it's lime green. It goes with your hat. And <laughs> your, is your underwear lime green too? <laughs> Never mind. I, I don't want to know. I don't, don't want to know. <laughs> Michael, red underwear. I could see. <laughs> Lime green. Don't get me started. Michael, how are you? I'm good. Not no lime green today, but it's no misting. It's today. misting here really cold and um, you know, getting through uh, I don't want to say getting over because it is a, a victory to celebrate, but it is, you know, kind of depressing what happened in my home our home state of Ohio, since we're both from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but 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 guys, it's five million votes. Five million vote difference between uh, democracy and reaction, and I say democracy with a small D, even though it's the, the the party that's leading it has a has a big D at uh, in front of it. At at five million votes, I mean, Michael, that should cheer you up, man. I mean, golly gee, uh, uh, Anita. Uh Aren't you happy about five million votes? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I know Ohio seems to be exactly in the same position as it was in 2016 vis-a-vis -vis the presidential election. But I would make an argument that the suburbs are, it's much pinker. The, the, the Republican influence has waned since then. And I'm just going to make that argument in, when I write up, write up the, the results. But um, yeah, around the suburbs, it's not as Republican. So you can really see some things changing here, I think. Uh, my well, God. wait a minute now. You know, I'm from Ohio, and I, I, and I, and I take a look at the, and Mahoning County and the suburbs went red this time. Not and as red Lorraine as... Lorraine County, mm -hmm. red. Yes. Class, and Trumbull County. In fact, the whole goddamn state is... Red except for Franklin County, Mahoney the whole northeast corner. My county, bad. too. I'm from Fairfield County. And Cuyahoga. Oh my goodness. Well, the 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 area around uh, Dayton uh, turned blue, and then the the suburbs around all of the southern area, including Cincinnati, are a little less red than they were in okay. 2016. So. Well, we'll we got to look at that. I'm the bright side is that. we we can kind of think positive because you know. Obviously, a lot of working people didn't go for the Democratic Party this time, but that gives us some room. You know, maybe they'd go for us someday, you know, so there's always right. a bright side of it. There is a bright side. There's a whole Rosanna's lot of new been voters. A hell of a week. Rosanna, it's been a hell of a week. Um, you know, uh, all of these, the refusal of the Trump administration to concede. What do you make of it? I mean, is it just uh, bad boy uh, you know, spoiled mentalities going on there or is something else at work? Well, I think, you know, like I had said last time, he wasn't going to just go easily. He's going to go kicking and screaming like a tent, you know, like a child, you know, being taken away from a playground. So we do have to be mindful and be careful, be ready to get out in the streets when, you know, 
when and if uh, he attempts to not, you know, maybe even uh, attempts a coup, you never know. We just can't put anything past this president and those that are, you know, behind him. And, and so I think that we need to be very mindful of that and start spreading that idea that there is, you know, in the United States, it is possible, a coup is possible if we allow it. But we have the power not to allow it. So that's also important. Scott Rosanna raised the C word, coup. And uh, the, your editor, you're an editor of the party website, cpusa.org, which we encourage everybody to go to, to get some good information about what's taking place. And you guys use the word coup in an editorial. Do you, do you think that there was a possible coup take? That's a little bit, I mean. Yes. No, I, um, you know, the there was a headline in the People's World um, that uh, I believe qualified uh, Trump's attempt with the lawsuits to get all these ballots thrown out as a, a soft coup attempt. Um, you know, had I written that headline, I wouldn't have said soft. I think that absolutely was an attempt at a coup. Um, uh, will you know? Have we seen an attempt at a you know um, military uh, takeover, etc.? No. Um, uh, although, you know, with Trump uh, replacing the, you know, the, the, some of the top uh, civilian leadership in the Department of Defense, including, you know, those that are critical of him, uh, who knows? Um, Joe, you, you wrote an article recently um, kind of warning against the, the danger of it's like trying to normalize what's going on with Trump, trying to downplay uh, uh, how tense the situation is. What was your, can you give us your argument there? Well, you know, I was just like alarmed, man. I'm like, Rosanna, I'm like, you know, I was like really alarmed by, and I'm trying to understand what what's taking place. And, you know, you hear a lot of like psychological babble uh, on, from the talking heads saying, oh, well, you know, the dude is just upset, you know, he doesn't take losing well, you know, he's used to winning. And, you know, and I was just, well, maybe that's true, but uh, they're making moves as you and Rosanna pointed out, they're, they're um, shifting personnel in the Department of Defense and in the uh, intelligence agencies. They're blocking uh, the, Department of General Services, they're supposed to set up an office to provide money for the transition, to telling other agencies, well, you know, don't listen to Biden and them. Your budget planning has to be based on our projections for 2021. And all of this is adding up. And I'm saying, you know, what, what the heck is, and then they're building their base. You know, they're mobilizing. In fact, they're gonna have a demonstration in Washington tomorrow. If anybody wants to go mm. and check it out, take a ride down uh, the highway and stop in DC. Uh, and all of this adds up to what? Now, uh, I, and I, I'm just, you know, wondering what the, what the heck is uh, going on. And more than that, the ruling class, somebody is supporting this. Somebody is supporting this and they're powerful for, because otherwise, you know, the ruling class knows how to send a signal, Anita. They mm -hmm. know how to, that's why they call them the ruling class. You know what I mean? That's right. And when people don't listen, they need, they, they know how to kind of make them listen. I'm glad that you huh, huh? Go what? ahead. Anita. I was going to say, I'm glad you're on, you're on the alert and that we are on the alert against what nefarious activities he might have planned. But deep down, I believe that the people behind Donald Trump are his children, and that's about it. And everyone else is sort of pushing him um, 
pushing him towards a uh, concession eventually because the ruling class would rather not have a crisis of legitimacy. And he, he may have had the, the Trump campaign probably had this whole thing planned out thinking it was going to be a lot closer and they could steal the election this way. But the election was so decisive that they're not going to be able to, to steal it. And, um, and I think the ruling class doesn't want that crisis of legitimacy. Uh, it's a harder to rule a, a country uh, just by a dictatorial means rather than having people think that they have a role um, in choosing their, their next president. And uh, I, think they'd, I think they're moving him towards concession after the, the steps that are defined in the constitution take place. That's my Wait guess. Wait a minute though, Ros Rosanna, hasn't the whole aim of the Trump administration been to provoke, make, render illegitimate sections of, of the press, it's all fake news. You know, the judges, well, they're all liberals. Um, there, there's a deep state, you can't trust anything. You got people running around, you know, stealing babies and, and, and engaging in child prostitution. I mean, the whole thing is based on rendering the state illegitimate. Am I wrong? Well, I, th I think he's just trying whatever, you know, he's always been just trying to, you know, he has a, something in mind and he just goes and does this crazy stuff. And then he goes, take, turns around and does some other crazy stuff. And, you know, he's just trying to, to appease to everybody to see what it is that that's going to hold that he can, you know, use against those of us that are fighting back, really. And so, so he's going to, we, that's why we can't underestimate what he will try next because that's and, his style. And we should remember too that the, the, that the, that the, the fascist movement is also, is heterogeneous and, and there, are, there are conflicts within it. And it's always, you know, it's always been kind of troublesome to hold together the, you know, the, the mass uh, base of Trump with the um, sort of establishment right and, and all of that. And, and um, I think th there certainly are forces pushing him toward concession and there are forces um, that would, you know, that would like to see him not concede. And there's some disarray introduced there. I, I think what he's doing uh, right now is kind of uh, waiting for waiting for something to happen. Like all the signals have been sent, you know, um, all the encouragement to um, right-wing uh, militias, fascist forces, provocateurs have all been sent, all the, everything that, you know, I think he can put in place has been done. And, and he's, yeah, hoping that something jumps off, I think. And Michael, 3%, only 3% to make Anita's point, only 3% of the population, according to some a poll or a couple polls, think that Trump won the election. Well, so that, that's it's the interesting really not thing. not working, is it? Huh? When we were outside uh, tabling yesterday, there was a, the YCL had a tabling event with a petition that was, you know, to force Trump to concede power peacefully. And we ran into four different groups of people. The first group of people, which is very small, but, you know, you do meet them even here in New York City. It was the Republicans who stand with him. And they're like, ah, you, you know, the Democrats stole the election. You know, they walk by. Then you have a few folks who they voted for Trump and they're like, you know, what he's doing is way out of line you know and so they sign they're like you know he's yes. that's wrong then you have people who voted democrat and they said ah you guys are out here wasting your time he's out what are you talking about you guys are and then you have some who are trying to be ready like us and they're like yeah i'm signing because this guy's capable of anything like rosanna saying mm -hmm. he we don't know what to expect we don't know what to expect from him right. and so you meet there's really you know four different so it doesn't surprise me that three percent of the election only three percent thinks that he won won the election because it's a mixed bag things aren't you know black and white mm -hmm. i do agree that he would do anything and that he could he's going to be very dangerous in the next two months but i think it's all on behalf of himself and his and his children and his fortune and not not the ruling class as a whole and what pains well, me there is are sections, he's, going to be, he's going to leave behind. That's what I'm really concerned about. The suffering. The suffering, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, because we're at, at the, this COVID crisis is peaking again, 
-hmm. you know, the second wave is turning into a tidal wave, you know, mm -hmm. and um, but there are sections of capital that are behind Trump, like the Mercer family and those guys. And, and uh, again, if now certain sections of the, they're saying no, what's his name? Uh, the uh, uh, people from the Wall Street Journal. Okay. And uh, what's the name of that famous, infamous, uh, not Roger Ailes from Fox News, but the guy, the political guru for Bush. Rove, and he, Arnold Rove. Who? Arnold Rove. Arnold Rove, Arnold Rove. Yes. yeah. Yes. He said, yo, man, you gotta chill. You know, this is, this is over. And so there be, and then like, I think, oh my God, four of the 53 Republican senators, oh, four of them, it's a mass <laughs> movement, have said that Trump, that Trump should, chill and that he should uh, concede. And so that's a, so, I mean, I, I guess you can say that, that that's the beginnings of some, and yes, they are afraid of him and his tweets and that he's gonna get the bait all riled up. But um, Scott, the thing that gets me, you know, and then I think that Marxists have to, think about is bourgeois interpretation of what is taking place and understanding it in individualistic behavioral uh, ways and not seeing the class and democratic issues that lay beneath it. Because again, when they want something to happen, when the ruling class, they know how to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I told somebody, you remember that scene from the Godfather? Godfather one, when there was a dude in Florida, Rosanna, the horse who had horses. Yes. And oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. he wouldn't do what they wanted to do. And then the boy woke up one day, and what did he find in his bed? A horse's head. A horse's <laughs> head. They know how to send a signal. That's right. And um, when they want to send a signal, they know how to, you know. So I think that anyway, five million votes, it's a mandate for democracy, uh, Anita. And um, but Georgia on my mind this morning. Yes, where so, Biden is winning by 14,000 votes right now. So right now, but they're doing a recount, right? Have, yeah. have they started? They started a hand recount today. Today. And then we got the, the runoffs coming up. And uh, I know the, um, the Democratic Party in my area uh, already during, you know, the before the November, before the general election, they were sending, I think they just the, in my county, they sent 16,000 postcards to voters in Georgia. Um, and you know, there's going to be more mass mass postcards, uh, phone banking uh, for these these runoffs for the Senate. Because um, if we right now, the best case is a is a 50 50 Senate with Kamala Harris having the deciding vote. Um, still not ideal, but um, but it's better than you know, it's better than the alternative. So we really right. really have to mobilize around it's, those Georgia Senate runoffs. And it's within reach, I think. I think we could do that in, in Georgia. Um, and I, I, I think Stacey Abrams' organization, uh, Fair Fight, is just in, in high gear right now. I think uh, every effort is going to be made to get out the vote um, in Georgia on January 6th. Well, but, let's hope that on that day, January 6th, it's a rainy, it's a rainy night on the, on the right wing and that the sun <laughs> comes up. Uh, for for democracy, you remember that song, "Rainy Night in Georgia." That was yep. one of my favorite songs. But that was before your time, Michael. You don't remember no, no, he doesn't. Any uh, rainy night in, but it's a wonderful song. Look it up; you'll fall in love with it. It's a it's a but great getting, song. Getting back to your point about um, the the sort of insufficiency of of bourgeois kind of psychological ways of analyzing Trump, you know, it, it's it's there's a similarity with how with kind of the fascination with Hitler um, 
in the sort of history channel kind of sphere like all of these like probing cycle of what what made him do this what you know could have um it's like the people who for whom you least require that kind of analysis are the ones who get you don't need a probing psychological analysis to know that donald trump is completely unfit for the presidency you don't need you know to think that he has dementia or uh cognitive decline or 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 whatever you don't need to dive in delve into his childhood trauma it, no it, it was apparent from the first time he opened his mouth on the campaign trail mm -hmm. that the, the whole course of his presidency was you know was written out and and I, you know yeah. i also think i also think that once we get past this period and we get a, a a reminder of what a sober president can look like not a perfect president you know don't get me wrong but just somebody that from time to time makes sense even you know i think we're going to really realize the toxic nature of these past four years. Mm -hmm. And many people will, I'm, you know, I'm thinking that many people will realize, you know, it's just like when you remove yourself from a, from a toxic relationship or just a toxic individual or even, you know, a, mo a toxic movie, you realize the impact it had had on you, the hold it had, had on you mm -hmm. in the last period. So I think that that's going to be something that, you know, the American people will will learn from and just really um, remember because that's that's yeah. it's pretty powerful. And I think revelations will be made about Trump's misdeeds while in office and, and at other times. And I think his uh, financial um, con men, con man grifting dealer deals will come to light, maybe in a Hopefully criminal Hopefully during a trial. Way. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, let's see what happens. You know, I think that the bottom line, though, is that something was going on in Washington this week. And uh, there was a really interesting article in the Washington Post just yesterday I read where this uh, op-ed writer was saying that, was describing, they were struggling with how to cover it. They were, they knew something was going on and they didn't know quite what, and they didn't want to feed it. And they didn't want to raise alarms necessarily. And so they reviewed several of the uh, newspapers and uh, cable news programs and how they were covering the quote unquote coup. And, um, and, I, and, and I thought that that was really telling. And I am so proud and glad to be part of a party that raised the alarm mm -hmm. and said, guys, something may be happening here. You know, let's not overestimate it, but let's not underestimate it either. And that I think is really important. And this weekend, the Communist Party's National Committee is meeting and we're gonna be delving into it and we're gonna be making plans as to how to move uh, to the next step. Uh, and the road to the next step, everybody knows, lies in Georgia, mm -hmm. lies in Georgia. And so whatever you can do to help out, uh, you know, go to those websites, check out, play a role, make a phone call, send a text, yeah. send a postcard, whatever you can do, I'm sure, to help uh, democracy win in the deep south will impact the entire country. In fact, it'll impact the entire world because, uh, oh. oh my gosh. Oh, okay, that's it. We've been All right. 25. Good, good, good afternoon, y'all. Uh, have a great <laughs> weekend. We'll see you tomorrow at the National Committee meeting of the party. We'll be reporting on it next week uh, uh, here and at the PW and on our website. So stay strong, stay safe, stay physically distant, but socially uh, close. Uh, stay in the struggle, stay in the fight. Bye, y'all. Bye, Bye comrades. Bye, comrades. Bye. All right. What happened to Michael? He got kicked off. He got booted. <laughs> <laughs>